Hello, my name is Nera and I'm a crush artist from Czech Republic. And as well as many of you, I have some bad sketchbook pages. <laughs> That's right. But sometimes even the bad sketchbook pages are good. But to be honest, I have a bunch of pages that have only sketches and graphite on them and that kind of feels like a waste of perfectly good page. In today's video we will be covering some of those pages up, mostly with gouache paints, but any medium is a good medium. The sketches we will cover up are drawings I used as an idea development for Inktober 2020 and if you want to see how they turned out, there is a video in the info cards right now for you to watch. It has time lapses of them all. Let's prepare our supplies, shall we? When covering pages like this, I like to have a few options on my hands, meaning I like to prepare gouache paints, watercolors, colored pencils and anything else that comes to my mind. It is also a good idea to prepare a Pinterest board of your favorite pics that inspire you at the moment so you have some interesting impulses to follow and explore in your sketchbook. Depending on the pages that you have, you can decide to do different types of sketchbook spreads. You can rework a whole double page spread, one page spread or just some elements of already existing spread. Whatever you decide, you still have more chases to do. Yay! <laughs> double page and single page spread can be treated as a one whole canvas designated for one painting or you can break it up and paint more elements together. If you choose the second case, try to think a little bit about the atmosphere of those elements and maybe pick a color palette for yourself. You can always improve, but these cover-ups and sketchbook pages in general are much easier on eye with unified color palette and theme. Though it is easier said than done, I myself am guilty of not picking a color palette or theme at all. For me, sketchbook is a place for experiments and explorations, so I don't like it to be neat. I like to get messy, I like to use old paint and old ideas, cover the pages with nonsense basically. To be honest, many times this meaningless page covering got me some interesting ideas. I think this was able to happen because I sketchbooked for a couple of hours at a time, jumping from one sketchbook to another, and while lost in this frenzy to create and recreate reference pictures, I created some of my best ideas. If I am using a kind of mixed media sketchbook, meaning you can use pens, markers and watercolor squash and acrylics in it, I hate to leave pages plain just with some sketched out ideas. I feel like it's a waste of perfectly good pages. If I use the sketch on the page to create a different piece, I am more than inclined to paint over it, usually study style way. This particular page with pink wash was heavily inspired by Danielle Bennett draws on Instagram and her painting of beautiful butterfly where she used a vibrant color for background and then she built a piece up with some very beautiful textured strokes while on some places the wash was still visible which I fell in love with. I took that pic as a reference as well as an image from Pinterest. I am usually not so much into landscapes but this one took my breath away. The flower shapes simplification is inspired by Lee Ellison style. I love using references this way. And sketchbook is a good place to try master studies of your favorite artists, trying to mash up different styles or color inspirations which is how it should be. The next page I try to work having some elements in my mind. My color palette was also established in my mind, which was red, orange, deep green, lime green and a little bit of brown. With the house I started inspired by Magali Franov on Instagram, but I didn't have a reference picture of her art in front of me, so I wasn't able to capture her soft and cozy warm vibe that I admire so much. I think that was a bit better in the forest study. Honestly, I'm not very skilled in painting sceneries, backgrounds and stuff like that, so it was a lot of learning. The same with the element of fox and cat on the stump. If I wanted to get rid of it, I would spray the varnish and cover the page in acrylic paint and then paint some more. Or I would varnish it, prep it for oils and paint with them. Or you can put a post-it note on the top of the parts that you don't like and redraw them on the top. You can also stick a finished piece you already like that would otherwise be let loose in your drawers. Or maybe you can stick there a fresh piece of paper and finish the sketchbook spread in a different way. I would also like to remind you that even though we talked about covering back sketchbook pages, nothing like that really exists. Everything considering good or bad is a definition you put into your brain and you should practice a healthy mindset and be very aware of the fact that every painting that you struggled painting made you learn something new. 
Once it's painted and finished, there's only one thing left to do if you consider something went wrong, and that would be a reflection. Find out what you don't like about it in details. You don't like the composition? Do quick studies of photos you find have excellent composition. You can do very small black and white breakdown of masterpieces you are inspired by. Try to keep them in basic shapes and after you practice, your sense of composition will get better. Maybe you don't like the colors. Take the painting in a digital program and try different options until you settle on the one that you like the best. You don't have to paint the whole piece again, you learned your lesson. Or you can do a quick study in your sketchbook, it's very easy. Behind every question, an honest answer is progress, hiding in plain sight, which you can easily target and get better at it. If you want to check out how many mistakes I made in my last sketchbook, there is a video in the info cards. By looking at other people's sketchbooks, you will find out their thought process and the aesthetic they are drawn to. Target people that inspire you and get inspired by their sketchbooks. But first, try to decide why you are drawn to them. After this, select a good reference photo from internet. It would be best to select from some online libraries of royalty-free photos like Pixabay, Unsplash, Pexels or Free Images and others. You can browse them, pin them onto your Pinterest board and come back to them when you have the right mood for painting. Even though that I don't like this page that I created in my sketchbook, this one with the cat and fox, I will keep it the way it is. For me, bad art is a step closer to good art, so it's a necessary part of my process. I know I could probably make the page look a bit better Have I spent more time painting it, but it served its purpose for me and I am satisfied, which is the most important conclusion to take out of this video. Everything depends on what you think about your art and it ties in with your art confidence. I hope you will be confident in your own art. Do whatever you want to your sketchbook and enjoy the opportunity of each new sketchbook page to the fullest, whatever that means to you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I am focusing on developing myself as an artist and I am preparing a series about children's book illustration. I am a complete beginner in this field, so I will be working on a lot of personal projects where you can tag along. There will be a lot of work in sketchbooks, especially while developing characters and the worlds around them to create a wholesome representation of my chosen stories. I will be sharing more in-depth information over on my Patreon, so if that's something you're interested in, there's a link in the description. I would also like to take this opportunity and send a huge thank you to my Patreon, Nella. Girl, you're great, thank you so much. If you'd like some extra benefits and content, check out my Patreon. Have a beautiful day and sketchbook away. If you would like to see my video about gaining your art confidence, it is right now on the screen. Or you can binge watch my whole channel in this playlist right here. See you soon, bye!